this just seems like a, a waste of money. The, the deal here is that there's a, there's a myriad of things that we just were shocked at. So now that we're looking at the hoses, let's, let's <laughs> well, <clears throat> I, I'm, I was very shocked at how many hoses and how many other doodads are floating around inside this thing. Hey, I'm Steven and this is Solving the Money Problem. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. So we just heard from the automotive expert of experts, Sandy Munro, describing how shockingly bad the thermal management system is within the Ford Mark E. To be honest, I'm not surprised. And regular viewers of the channel will probably have noticed a recurring theme in a few videos over the last week or so. I've discussed how General Motors are completely and utterly fucked. I've also discussed how Toyota are completely and utterly fucked. And in today's video, we're going to be looking at why Ford are also completely and utterly fucked. That's right, Tesla is eating their lunch, running circles around these legacy automotive companies, and all but guaranteed to put them all out of business later this decade. So with that said, let's get into the video. And by the way, since I know there's a lot of crypto lovers watching, and people who like free stuff, it's your lucky day. For a limited time, you can get up to $250 in free crypto bonuses when funding a new account on BlockFi, where you can use cryptocurrency to earn interest, borrow cash, and buy or sell crypto. If you want your free crypto, use the link in the description. It also helps out the channel. And if you'd like up to two free stocks, check out the link in the description to Weeble. If you open a new account, you'll get one free stock valued up to $250 just for opening an account. And if you fund your account with $100, you'll get a second free stock valued up to $1,600. Unless you don't like free stocks, that is. And if you're in Australia, the UK, or New Zealand, you can get a free stock with stake also using the link in the description. Let's get back to it. I wanna look at how the cooling system works and I think it'll be kind of an interesting program. The guys have told me that there's lots of stuff for me to look at. So with that, let me just go over here and uh, we're gonna remove the frunk. So um, let's, let's pull this thing out. Corey, get the active valve. Oh, 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 thank God. Oh, Corey. Oh, I think you just saved my life. Holy oh, I can't believe it. Oh, oh, oh. What just happened? Okay, so we dramatized that a little bit, but uh, it was uh, something that almost happened when I first saw the uh, underneath the, uh, the frunk. I, I, I was very shocked at how many hoses and how many other doodads are floating around inside this thing. So obviously the guys over at Munro Live having a little bit of fun there, but the point is quite clear. When Sandy Munro first looked under the hood of the Mark E and actually saw the thermal management system, he was literally shocked at how pathetically bad the engineering was. A complete and utter total clusterfuck. And this is in stark contrast to how Munro reacted basically having a complete and utter nerdgasm when he saw Tesla's thermal management system in the Model Y, which has now also made its way into the Model 3, the Octovalve heat pump solution. Now I just want to take a moment here to really emphasize how important this is. At the end of the day, engineering is what matters most to these companies. That includes automotive engineering and also the engineering of the manufacturing systems. But the point is quite clear. Tesla has the world's best engineers and this isn't a point you can argue with me. The data is there. If you ask graduating engineering students who they most want to work for, Number one and number two every year, switching between one and two, it's Tesla and SpaceX. Everyone wants to work for Elon. Why? Well, he's probably one of the world's best engineers, and these engineers also understand that if they have good ideas, they'll actually be implemented. And it's not just that Tesla has their pick of the bunch in terms of the world's elite engineers. We're seeing countless examples of this manifesting within their products and their manufacturing systems. It's not just Tesla's thermal management system, the Octovalve heat pump. It's not just the gigantic giga casting and the cutting edge material science that was required to make this happen. Tesla also literally has the world's four safest vehicles ever tested. That requires some pretty serious engineering smarts as well. And then of course we have the actual performance of their vehicles as well. Shout out to the Plaid Model S, we're not even going to go there in this video. The point is, no matter which angle you look at Tesla, we're seeing evidence manifesting itself that their engineers are a cut above everyone else. And this is a big problem. You see. Tesla's lead is extending. They're getting further and further ahead of the so-called competition. That lead is becoming unassailable. If somebody's moving faster than you are and you can't reach their same top speed, you will never catch them. And this is the exact situation that the legacy automakers find themselves in now. Tesla is running away with this. There's no catching up. 
At best, these companies will struggle throughout the decade and eventually end up out of business or in the best case scenario, a shell of their former selves doing tiny volumes of specialized vehicles. Why? Because they have an army of the world's best engineers driven by one of the world's greatest leaders, Elon Musk. I know this sounds hyperbolic, but I've got a time machine. I know what the future looks like and this is how things play out. Legacy Auto are screwed. They don't have the talent. They don't have the leadership and they don't have a chance, but they do have inertia. So as spectators, we get to watch a number of Titanics sink in slow motion over the coming years. Now this isn't to shit on the engineers at Ford, but we just have to be honest here. Tesla has the special forces in terms of the world's engineers. Ford has at best the leftovers, and we're seeing this manifest itself in the differences between these two products. Let's go over here and just have a quick look. <clears throat> the first thing that, that I want to do is tell you what the different components are inside the product. So over here we have the inverter. The inverter is basically what runs the motor, uh, among other things. Down here we've got the motor and the gearbox. Over here we've got the compressor, which I believe um, is, a, is as good as what we saw off the Tesla. I think it might be even a little smaller. This is the DC-DC converter. This changes DC power from one voltage to another. <clears throat> Down here, we've got the onboard charger. And that's, uh, that's to make sure that everything is kind of like working from, uh, from your, from your uh, you know, for the rest of the car. Um, and then we have four pumps. Pump one, pump two, pump three, and pump four. Now, pump three and four, have a heat sink um, underneath them and uh, and quite frankly um, I don't I don't see that very often the last thing I want you to see is down here you can see that there's a four-way valve okay now connecting all this stuff together is this myriad of hoses and you can see that we've marked the flow characteristics for all of these different hoses so that we can try and figure out how this actually works so now that we're looking at the hoses, let's, let's, <laughs> let's look at how they have to be put together. Did you guys catch that? Sandy Munro couldn't help but laugh out loud at how bad the engineering is there. Let's watch that again. So now that we're looking at the hoses, let's, let's, <laughs> let's look at how they have to be put together. One of the banes of, um, uh, of, of an engineer is COTS, commercial off-the-self components. And when I look at this, I look at a crutch. I, I don't like these things. I don't like them because it's a good way to have an operator make a mistake. So if we look at these components, and I'll point them out, right here, this is a spring clip <coughs> or, or a spring clamp. There are uh, 31 of those. Um, there are 14 uh, different um, COTS connectors and um, if we look at them, this is going to be a T. These, um, the straight ones are called uh, nipples, like down here. And I can't see one right now, but there's 390s in there as well. These are a lot of different connectors that um, when I was in charge, of, or not in charge, but when I worked on the sealing and fastening task force at Ford Motor Company back in the, uh, in the 80s, we tried everything we could to eliminate leaks. And what we found was that these type of connectors, um, they just leak. They're, it just happens that way. So we tried to get rid of them. <laughs> All right, let me get this straight. It's 2021 now, right, guys? I'm not that high. Uh, okay, yeah, cool. It is. It's 2021. And Munro was just talking about how in the 1980s, the 1980s, he was trying to get rid of this shite. Oh, boy. The other thing we tried to get rid of was, if you'll notice here, box on top of box, on top of box, on top of box, on top of box. Not gonna lie, that sounds like a pretty fun Saturday night. I'll explain when you're older. And then, uh, and then we've got a cross car beam, and then another box. It just, and then look at all these screws. We, have, we can't count them all up, we'll do that later on. But the, the deal here is that there's a, there's a myriad of things that we just were shocked at. Words matter a lot, and Sandy is choosing his carefully here, but despite that, the term shocked, shocking, okay, could have said anything. This is a little bit strange, a bit disappointing, a little bit inefficient, they could probably have done better here, blah, 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 no, no, no. He's shocked, 
at how bad the engineering is here. As I mentioned earlier, this is a total cluster f and it's extremely embarrassing. And again, I'm not here to disparage the engineers at Ford. They're probably doing the best with what they've got, designed by committee, insufficient resources, and obviously they've got the C, D and E grade engineers rather than all the A grade engineers who are currently working for Elon Musk. So they're making the most of what they've got. But I'm calling a spade a spade. This is embarrassing. Sandy is shocked at how bad this engineering is. The one thing that, uh, the one thing that I was shocked at was this. It says on the back, scrap if dropped. And we have no idea what that product is. So <clears throat> there's a lot of things that we need to look at in order to really understand why it is that Ford did the things that they did. So one of the little doodads that we saw that, uh, that kind, of, um, kind of surprised me was this. These are sealed connectors um, and they're high powered connectors, but for some reason or other, there's a box over the top of them. And I, I really don't know why. It's not like somebody I don't think is going to be able to get in. They'd have to get through the covers that are over the top of this in order to get to that. This just seems like a, a waste of money. A legacy automotive manufacturer wasting money? I truly am shocked. By the way, shout out to everybody who's seen an ad for a Ford product during this video. Speaking of wasting money, let's move on. These are the componentry that are inside the, uh, the frunk. So we're looking at a lot of bits and pieces. And, um, and uh, the first question is, well, how does that compare with Tesla? Well, this is Tesla's. They have a cowl piece that goes over in the front and the rest of it, it just seals off into, into the, uh, basically the body. So this is kind of a, a little more elegant design because it's got a lot less parts. Did someone say unnecessary parts? At each little, little tiny part, each process, say is the process necessary? Like, because the best part is no part, best part of process is no process. One thing that we were totally stumped on was these drilled holes. Um, these look like they were done at assembly. You can see that they've got little tags and whatnot. If I was going to, oh, there's another one here. So if I was going to, um, if I was going to design this mold, I would just have a pin in here. <clears throat> that pin would make that hole and I'd be done. But these were all drilled in, and so we didn't really understand what was going on. And then we found out an interesting thing from one of the, um, <clears throat> one of the people who were watching. Apparently, initially, this button for the hood release for the child uh, wasn't there. <clears throat> and somehow they had to, uh, they, <laughs> they had to do something uh, to make sure that a kid couldn't get in. And that's where this separator came for the, uh, uh, for the prevention of anybody being able to get in here. Um, that was an expensive uh, mistake um, for somebody not to make that happen. Ooh, that's awkward. Now, to be fair, Tesla in the past have made many expensive mistakes as well, but there seems to be a key difference. Tesla isn't a 118 year old company. Tesla appears to have been learning from their mistakes and adapting rather quickly. Yet here we see this Ford Mark E with an absolute nightmare. Looks like somebody vomited up spaghetti for their thermal management system. I think Sandy said there was something like 38 different types of off the shelf connectors rather than integrated system. Now I asked the question, why weren't Ford able to engineer something comparable to Tesla's Octavalve heap? I mean, they literally could have just copied the design, like literally buy a Model Y, tear it down and copy everything in there. They didn't even do this. I just, what are they doing? This is a lot more parts than, uh, than, than what we should have seen. We, we should try our best to try and com combine as many parts as we possibly can. At Monroe, we, uh, we uh, actually, <laughs> it was at Ford Motor Company that I actually invented most of the stuff that we do or used it. And, um, and uh, if a part doesn't have to be a fundamentally different material or it doesn't have to move during the operation of the products, uh, existence, then it's supposed to be an elimination or combination of that part into other parts. When we look at this, we're looking at lots of parts and these guys don't have too many. So let's have a look at what we see in here with all of this and look at what, uh, what, uh, what Tesla had. So in essence, this is the octo valve. This is what we call a super manifold and these are two heat exchangers. These all are in one 
relatively small package. Now I'm sure there's a small package joke in there somewhere, but I'm just gonna let this one slide. With only a few hoses that go from place to place. That means a lot less leak paths. These leak paths are something that are the bane of, uh, of construction, especially if you're looking at trying to push a car out every 60 seconds or so. That's what these guys are hopefully gonna be doing uh, because we wanna make sure that, or they wanna make sure that the customers are happy and there's no leaks all over their floors. I think that this could be packaged inside this vehicle, something similar to this. It might look a little bit different, but certainly it won't look as complicated as that and it'll never have as many quality problems as far as leak paths and what are concerned. This is a brilliant visual example of the difference between Tesla engineering and everyone else. And I don't just mean Ford, I literally mean everyone else. What Sandy is holding in his hands does effectively the same job as the absolute clusterfuck of spaghetti we're seeing in the Ford Mark E under the hood. This is really embarrassing. Take a moment to let this sink in. This is just the perfect visual to explain why Ford and most other legacy automotive manufacturers won't survive the decade. Tesla's engineering is on another level. So I really would like to say to Ford if, uh, <laughs> If you could, it might be a good idea to really rethink this. This will cut the cost, it'll cut the weight because all those hoses are filled with fluid. And fluid is a lot heavier than a couple of pieces of plastic and a die casting. So at the end of the day, um, I'm not as pleased as what I was hoping to be when we pulled the, uh, pulled the frunk out. But I can tell you for sure that this is better than the ID4. So that just happened. <laughs> Apparently, Volkswagen have done an even worse job with their thermal management system than this nightmare. <laughs> oh, shit. So, yeah, the competition is coming, and uh, this is what it looks like. I'd be very scared if I was Tesla, wouldn't you? By the way, shout out to the basement-dwelling, self-hating adult versions of Tesla Q, who've been repeating this for years and years and years. In fact, over a decade now, some of these folks. Uh, yeah, this is the competition that's coming for Tesla. I'd be shaking in my boots. These are things that, that, that should be addressed and soon. Now, I will tell you that Tesla changed from what they had with the, uh, with the um, super bottle to this process, and they did it in less than a year. Um, that's a challenge that Ford Motor Company should be taking on right now, and hopefully, <clears throat> hopefully they'll be able to make it as a running change in both the, uh, uh, the Mustang here and uh, the Lightning, the F-150 Lightning. A wise suggestion and an important challenge from Sandy Munro here to the engineers at Ford. They really do want to fix their shit on this one, especially before the F-150 Lightning. This is going to be a make or break product for the company. If Ford can get their act together and make these profitably with high quality without too many issues, I think this will be a major step forward. I still think the Cybertruck is going to eat the lunch of the F-150 and all other pickup trucks in the United States, especially after they've been on roads for six to 12 months, people start to experience them and see they're the real deal and understand the utility the features, the functionality, and the overall value. But I tell you what, if this is the quality, the level of engineering we can expect to see in Ford's flagship electric pickup truck, the F-150, they could be out of business sooner than I thought. And speaking of, let me know in the comments below your prediction for when Ford will go bankrupt. I'm Stephen Mark Ryan, this is Solving the Money Problem, and I love you all. And don't forget, if you'd like up to $250 in free crypto bonuses with BlockFi, use the link in the description. You can also get two free stocks with Webull and a free stock with Stake also linked in the description. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, if you have any ideas for future videos, let me know. I read all your comments. P.S. If you're still watching, you're awesome. If you'd like early access, exclusive videos, regular Q&As, our private Discord server and more, consider supporting the channel at patreon.com slash solving the money problem so I can keep creating content for you guys. There's a link in the description. You can now also become a member of the channel for some exclusive perks. To learn more, click the join button next to subscribe. And don't forget to check out our merch store. Either way, the best form of support is you being here and watching, so thanks again.